October 25, 2010. Landslide win. Rob Ford is elected as mayor of Toronto by a landslide, sweeping into office on a pledge to stop the gravy train at City Hall. He wins despite two damaging revelations during the campaign, that Ford was charged a decade ago in Florida with marijuana possession and impaired driving, and that he offered to help a Toronto resident obtain Oxycontin on the street. His popularity is largely credited to suburban anger over a perceived waste of municipal tax dollars. March 7, 2013 Cocaine and Groping Sarah Thompson, a marginal candidate in the 2010 mayoral election, accuses Ford of groping her buttocks at a political function in Toronto's financial district. Thought it was a friendly hello until he suggested I should have been in Florida with him last week because his wife wasn't there. Thompson writes on Facebook. She later says Ford appeared to be high on cocaine at the time, describing him to a local radio DJ as sweaty, talking quickly, out of it, arrogant. Ford strenuously denies the allegations. March 26, 2013 Drunk and Disorderly The Toronto Star publishes a report stating that Ford was asked to leave the Toronto Garrison Ball, an event celebrating the Canadian Armed Forces because organizers believed he was impaired. It's an open secret at City Hall that the mayor has battled alcohol abuse, the report states. Those closest to him are concerned for his health and the impact it has on his job as mayor of Canada's largest city. Ford denounces the Star report as an outright lie. May 16, 2013 The Crack Video Gawker, a New York-based gossip website breaks the news that a group of drug dealers are shopping around a cell phone video of Ford smoking crack cocaine. Hours later, the Star publishes a corroborating report, saying the video clearly shows the mayor, top shirt buttons open and eyes half closed, inhaling from a glass crack pipe. The next morning, swarmed by media outside his home and at City Hall, Ford rejects the reports as ridiculous, and blames a media vendetta. May 24, 2013 State of Denial After more than a week of dodging questions about the crack scandal, Ford calls a press conference and issues a carefully worded statement, I do not use crack cocaine, nor am I an addict of crack cocaine. As for a video, I cannot comment on a video that I have never seen or does not exist. Ford does not answer questions on whether he has ever smoked crack or on the origin of a widely publicist photo showing the mayor with several suspected gang members outside a Toronto crack house. June 13, 2013 Project Traveler Police execute a series of pre-dawn raids in Toronto's Dixon Kipling neighborhood, targeting, among other addresses, the West End crack house where the Ford video was allegedly filmed and the apartment complex where it was allegedly stashed. Police arrest dozens of suspected gang members and say they have hobbled a U.S.-Canada gun pipeline. Asked whether police are investigating Ford, Chief Bill Blair responds, the right place for that information to come out is in court. August 9, 2013 Drunk and Stroll Ford turns up at a local Toronto street festival appearing intoxicated. He is stumbling, slurring his words and telling residents he wants to party. Photos and videos taken by festival goers reveal that the mayor's vehicle is also on the scene. Ford later acknowledges he had a few beers at the event, but says he drove there sober and did not drive home. October 1, 2013 Good guy arrested The mayor's friend and occasional driver, Sandro Lisi, is arrested on a number of charges, including drug trafficking and conspiracy to commit an indictable offense. At a bizarre press conference held at a gas station near his home, Ford says he is shocked, and defends Lisi as a good guy. Lisi was previously identified in media reports as having attempted to retrieve the crack video, although the allegations remain unproven. October 31, 2013 Crack Video Found Police announce they have retrieved the crack video from a seized hard drive. Just as an Ontario court releases a raft of search warrant documents related to Lisi's arrest, the documents describe a plethora of clandestine meetings and phone calls between Ford and Lisi, 
along with allegations from a former Ford staffer that the mayor was using marijuana and possibly cocaine. Ford resists renewed calls for his resignation, telling reporters he cannot comment, because it's before the court. November 5, 2013 Drunken Stupor As pressure continues to mount on Ford, he shocks reporters at a city hall scrum by offhandedly admitting to his crack use after months of denial. Yes, I have smoked crack cocaine, Ford says. But no, do I? Am I an addict? No. Have I tried it? Probably in one of my drunken stupors, probably approximately about a year ago. Later in the afternoon, Ford calls a formal news conference to apologize and to assure residents, these mistakes will never, ever, ever happen again. November 7, 2013 Threatening Rant Another Ford video surfaces in the media, this time showing the clearly impaired mayor ranting, swearing and threatening to kill an unidentified person. No holds barred, brother, the mayor says in the brief clip, speaking to a person off screen while pacing back and forth in an apparent state of agitation. He dies or I die brother. Ford later acknowledges he was extremely inebriated at the time but does not explain what prompted his rant. November 13, 2013 Drinking and Driving Another raft of court documents related to the Lisi case are released, revealing that former Ford staffers believed the mayor was consuming alcohol at City Hall and consorting with escorts. George Christopoulos, the mayor's former press secretary, said multiple staff members were concerned about Ford's tendency to drink and drive, the documents allege. Back at City Hall, Ford admits he has purchased illegal drugs while in office. November 14, 2013 Crude Remark As Ontario's Premier muses about implementing new legislation to make it possible for the City Council to force Ford out of office, the mayor angrily denounces new allegations that he offered to perform oral sex on a former female staffer. I would never do that. I'm happily married. I've got more than enough to eat at home, he tells reporters, sending another wave of astonishment and outrage rippling through City Hall. November 18, 2013 Power Stripped Council votes to remove most of Ford's powers, leaving him mayor in name only. After a series of votes, which pass with overwhelming majorities, Ford's office budget is slashed, several staffers are transferred to the deputy mayor and Ford loses his ability to designate key items on the council agenda. Ford promises outright war in the 2014 election. December 4, 2013 Doing the Heza Newly released police wiretap documents allege that Ford unsuccessfully attempted to purchase the crack video offering drug dealers $5,000 and a car in exchange for the damaging cell phone footage. One of the men involved in the video scandal also claimed to have photographs of Ford doing the Heza, a slang term for heroin, police say. The wiretap documents suggest that drug dealers deliberately filmed and photographed Ford in compromising situations. January 21, 2014 Ford Speaks Patois Less than three months after Ford vowed to curb his problem behavior, a new video surfaces, this time showing the mayor drunk at a local restaurant. In it, Ford appears unsteady on his feet, slurring his speech and speaking vaguely about counter-surveillance techniques. At times he slips into an accent that resembles Jamaican patois, repeatedly using the expletive bumba clot. I would never do that. I'm happily married. I've got more than enough to eat at home. Rob Ford, Toronto Mayor. April 17, 2014. Another run. Ford officially launches his re-election bid for the October 27th vote. I never, ever will back down, the mayor tells supporters at a campaign event, contending he successfully derailed the gravy train during his four years in office. Ford does not speak directly about the crack scandal although he thanks supporters for sticking with him through the rocky moments. April 30, 2014 Seeking Help Three disastrous media reports land at the same time, one describes a second video purporting to show Ford smoking crack cocaine. Another cites a witness who claims to have seen Ford snorting cocaine. 
and a third contains a linked audio recording in which the mayor drunkenly speaks of wanting to jam his council colleague and 2014 mayoral rival, Karen Stintz. Ford announces he will take a leave of absence to deal with his substance abuse problems. May 9, 2014 Racist Tirade The Star publishes a report detailing a wild night in March in which Ford allegedly spent time with his closest felon friends and boasted about having extramarital sex. In an audio recording from that night, which is recounted by the newspaper, Ford allegedly unleashes a tirade of racist epithets before declaring, I'm the most racist guy around. I'm the mayor of Toronto. June 2, 2014 Comeback Plans In an interview from Rehab with the Toronto Sun, Ford says he can't wait to come back to work. He confirms a previous statement from his brother that he will leave rehab at the end of the month and be back in Toronto for Canada Day events on July 1st. I feel good, Ford tells the newspaper. You are going to see a difference. You are going to see a healthier Rob Ford and I am going to win the election on October 27, 1865.